there guys, it is Shark Hunter 21. We are back in near Automata for what is unfortunately probably the final time. And I truly mean that. So if you notice that our surroundings were in a different location. Kinda looks familiar. Kind of. Uh, what this is, is Emil's house. And if you can tell on our head, we've actually taken one of Emil's masks from over there. But we'll get to that shortly. Right now, real quick, I've done quite a bit of stuff like upgrading our weapons and such. But real quick, we're going to go through the archives for things I've collected, read the weapon stories, and then we are going to do the first secret boss. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do the second one. We'll see. So, oh, oh my goddamn headphones are being stupid. So, machine research report overview. While the machine life form network was destroyed following the collapse of the tower, a great deal, God damn it, a great deal of previously unknown information regarding the machine life forms and aliens was recovered from the wreckage. As part of this analysis, we compiled research and conjecture regarding both the machine life form network and the life form codename N2, commonly known as the Red Girls. Yeah, that was thought to have been commanding. <coughs> Machine life forms are weapons created by the aliens. The only command given for the behavior was to defeat the enemy. However, it appears that the capacity for growth and evolution went too far, and they eventually turned on and killed their creators. At this point, machine life forms recognized that the goal of defeating the enemy actually required an enemy. In order to maintain the singular objective, they reached the contradictory conclusion that their current enemies, the androids, could not be annihilated completely, lest they no longer have an enemy to defeat. In order to resolve this inherent contradiction, the machine life forms began to intentionally cause uh, deficiencies in their network, diversifying the vectors of evolution for all machines. This is the cause behind some of the more special machine life forms, such as Pascal and the Forest King. Oh wow, that's kind of a bummer when you think about it. That. Pascal and all the other unique robots we've been meeting are actually just part of a cycle like that. They were planned. That sucks. Meanwhile, the deficient network began repeating a process of self repair while incorporating surrounding information until it finally reached a fixed state as a new formal network. Traces of information. Information regarding human memories from the quantum server of the old model were discovered, indicating that it had integrated them during the final stages of its growth process. Said server contained a record of the discarded project Gestalt, as well as information on the human who was the first successful example of the Gestalt process. Having acquired information regarding humanity, the network structure changed once more, becoming what might better be called a meta network, or a concept, to borrow the words of machines. This led directly to the formation of the ego we identify as N2. So then, to sum up, for hundreds of years we've been fighting a network of machines with the ghost of humanity at its core. We've been living a stupid fucking... I'm sorry. We've been living in a stupid fucking world where we fight an endless war that we couldn't possibly lose. All for the sake of some council of humanity on the moon that doesn't even exist. I don't know what the point is to all this, but I swear I will kill every evolutionary dead in machine life form, as well as every single asshole behind Project Yorha. I'm coming for all your heads. Fuck you. Information analysis officer, jackass. Huh. So, I, I figured this was actually 9S talking here, but if that's jackass, then, uh... So does that mean all the androids have this information now? Or it just be jackass? I don't know. Alright, so we do have some... Oh crap. Abandoned factory memo. I hope I didn't skip through any of it. Uh, let's see. June 4th, I haven't been home in days. They cut my pay again. I can't keep this up. June 12th. It was decided at the morning meeting that they're stepping up a production quota. No wonder explosions keep happening. You can't just turn out important weapons all willy-nilly. September 22nd. There's another rampage in the underground test site. Sounds like a P-22 model this time. One of my friends died. 
when is this War of the Legion going to end? Okay, so that's another little reference uh, to... Uh, I, I think it's the beginning of Nier, the, like the very beginning of Nier, and the... what was the joke end of Drakengard 1, which has obviously become a lot more real. Let's see. Oh. I think I... No, I, I did read that one. I read that one. Let's see. Serious lithographs, gestalts, and I got a couple. Here we go. Project Gestalt Report Number Four. September twenty fourth, twenty twenty six. Summary: A report has been submitted to the Prime Minister regarding the rampaging rampaging weapons incident that occurred at the National Arms Laboratory in June. Though the laboratory's budget and all allocated human resources are expected to see significant cuts, cuts. Whoops. Cuts. I'm sorry. Freudian slip, I guess. A team of staffers. <laughs> That's a very funny thing about that. Oh, sorry. A team of staffers will continue Mesa research under the umbrella of Project Gestalt. Uh, records of human experimentation conducted using Mesa are scheduled to be disclosed to concerned parties separately as level six classified information. And the Mesa. <coughs> Real quick, in case I haven't explained that or if it has to come up, that's actually the magic that we see. Back in Nier, that's what it was. The the, the same uh, purple and pink orbs that the machines are spinning at us now was the Meso then. So I don't know whether to say the aliens had it or found a way to use the Meso. I'm not really sure. Report number five, May 5th, 2033. That's really close to my birthday. Shit. Um, let's see. Through the use of Mesa technology related to multi-dimensional worlds, 13 activation systems have been completed, including Grimoire Noir. We have also confirmed that these systems can be used to return Gestalt to their replicate forms once the white chlorination system has been fully eliminated. One sec. Hmm. Work necessary for this system will be continued by the Grimoire Noir Project Work Group. Number seven, January 3rd, 2025. Summary. Okay. Uh, it has been decided that the United Nations will launch a full-scale investigation and infiltration operation in order to determine the cause of the massive Legion outbreak in the Tokyo area. Details regarding the progress of Project Gestalt are to be shared as part of this effort, though we will insist that any information which leaves the country must first be thoroughly verified by our committee. Uh, in particular, information regarding relapses, named tentative, must be kept at the, sh at the strictest confidence. So I'm missing 8 and 9, is that it? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah. 8, 9, or somewhere. I'm not sure where. I I, I ha had found a couple other boxes. I was like, okay, one of these has got to have it. Nope. I mean, mind you, a, a couple I did find, of course, had the other Project Assault reports, but oh well. Now, onto the weapon stories. Like I said, I have upgraded so many. Okay, so it's gonna. It might take me a second here to. Oh, yeah, you do that. That's cute. Forgive me if I read over any that I have or haven't, but hey, they're on the screen here, regardless. Oh, boy. I'll just begin on the second verse of this one. Seeing the limits of his talent, the poet chose to abandon the pen and work the land and, and work the land instead. Soon this uh, lily white skin I'm sorry, soon his lily white skin began to grow dark and his once frail body became Sunni I know I know what the word means, I just can't say. Uh Sunui and tough. He eventually married a kind woman and several years later they had a child. As the peaceful, uneventful days went on, the man began to feel that there could be no greater happiness in life. Or so the poet wrote before he put down his pen, swallowed the paper whole, and prayed that the next life might turn out so well. He then took faith, already stained with the blood of another, and plunged it deep into his chest. Ha! Ah. Okay, the Iron Pipe. I'm pretty sure I read that one. If not, there you go. It's fucking awesome. Beast Bane. Let's see. I'll just read from the second again. 
The neighboring king adorned his new wife and treasured her looks above all else. He gave the middle princess six new dresses and ate fresh flowers every day, and his love caused her beauty to shine all the more. The middle princess did all she could to remain beautiful for her king. Oh, this one's so weird. But she knew time would eventually catch up with her, as it did for all, so after much hard thought, she developed a cunning plan. The middle princess had herself stuffed and mounted so she could remain beautiful for all time. The king wept joyful tears at the sight, but alas, two years later, war broke out and her body was crushed under the rubble of the castle. Just, what the fuck? Alright, the phoenix dagger. Uh, ba 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 ba. I think we've read. I'm gonna read from the third time passed, and eventually she got her revenge. Years later, when she was an old woman, the songbird appeared anew. What of your bow? it asked, but she did not understand, and come to think of it, what became of her beloved dagger? That night, bandits broke into her house, assaulted her daughter, and murdered her grandchild. The songbird then reappeared with a single question. How long will your hatred burn this time? So that's fucked up. Right? I mean, God. Um, her, her original thing of hatred, she, she succeeded in getting it in this goddamn bird, the phoenix. I'm going to call it a phoenix. Showed up and was like, okay, sure, you get it. But even after she gets it, she gets to have a full life, you know, obviously she has a daughter, grandchild, but then it's all taken away and the bird comes back and he's like, alright, let's see what you do this time. Maybe. It might just be mocking her at this point, but I'm not, it's fucked one way or another. Okay. Ancient Overlord, we'll read from the second. Uh, five years passed, then ten, then twenty. Though the family she protected began to grow old, the girl never aged. Eventually, the other villagers began to shun her. With no one to turn to, she finally left the village and began to wander the earth, visiting many strange lands in the process. As the years passed, her skill and fame as a master sword fighter grew to legend. Eternal life, powerful weapon, and boundless experience. She used these talents to become queen of a nation. And yet, there was emptiness in her life. She still desired the kindness her family denied her after that fateful day. Yeah. That kind of sucks. Type 40 sword. Let's see. Yeah. Um. No, I'm not sure at all if I read this one. Alright, we'll start at the beginning. Uh, Yoha R&D Team Journal, August 29th. Out of progress report meeting for the new weapon. Considering how many observers we have from the other orbiting satellites, I can tell they expect a lot from us. December 10th. We had our first corn installation experiment today, saw some troubling signs, including issues with unexpected irregular output and core perimeter defenses. January 8th. Mm. The circuits of three consecutive staffers burned out after attempting to remove the core's protection. I've requested replacement personnel. January 15th. Command pulled the plug in our project. The weapon will go into official oper will go into official operation with the core still sealed. Let's see our type 3 sword. Okay, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna get out of this. I don't like reading it through the intel, personally. I like seeing the weapon. That's just me. Okay. Plus, obviously, that's bigger. Okay, I know we got to the last bit. We're on the last one here. So, he, want, want to, he wanted to really feel like he was ripping through flesh. The craftsman modified a sword in search of that feeling, not thinking at all of the pain it would cause until one night, a bandit broke into his home, snatched the weapon up, and showed him exactly how effective it was. Yeesh. Okay, we read those. I read that. Pretty sure we read the machine sword. Um, yeah. Engine blade, no, we read that. Cyberstake, this one's weird. I don't quite... Give a second. Today is my 16th birthday and I have an audience with the king. Mom's apparently worried that he'll charge me with some big important task, so she gave me a cypher stick for some reason. <laughs> like that'll help. As we walk to the castle, Mom keeps babbling about how excited she is and how long she's been waiting for this day. She's told me this story a million and one time, so I just keep quiet like always. When we arrive, I see my friend coming out of the castle. He's 16 too, but, he's, but his fearless gaze makes him look like a legendary hero to be. She's got a lot, of, a lot to live up to. 
My dad's just a carpenter, so I've got it easy. <laughs> I just don't get this. It's like, I feel like this is a reference to something I'm just not getting. Because the weapon itself is just so bland. It, like this hero sigil. What is this? Changes damage values and treasure chests. It's just... What? I don't know. Okay, so that's the small swords. Now onto the large swords. Large swords. Nice. Swords. Beast Lord. Alright. Uh, second. Uh, the new queen raised a mighty army to afford the endeavor. She taxed her people and in turn they were given jobs and new factories created to support the war effort. People worked. Money flowed. As the army grew strong, the demand for factories grew with it. And then the cycle repeated. More work, more money, more work, more money. The queen's plan proceeded just as she envisioned it. To further strengthen the kingdom, we were converted to machines to enhance our output in the factories and the military. Our queen in turn became the control system that rules us to this day. So, yeah, kind of weird. Adds a beast effect to close range attacks. Oh yeah, no, this, um, I don't think we did, but this one's another painfully sad story. Mm. Uh, starting at the second again, the songbird slowly nursed the hawk back to health. The beautiful sight, the small white bird nestled in the elegant wings the hawk soon made it time to leave the forest. But before flying away, it promised the songbird it would one day return. In turn, the songbird gave the hawk one of its shining feathers as a token of friendship. As promised, the hawk eventually returned, but with a human in tow. Well done, said the human. These feathers will sell for a great price at the market. Then he slew the songbird in one blow and plucked its carcass clean. Yeah. Type 40 blade of red you. Yes, Fukita. Type 3, I'm sure. Red cruel blood? I don't think so. Um. I'm going to start at the beginning, why not? I'll never forget the time we met. I knew ours was a love that would last for eternity. But even when by his side, his feelings were a mystery. It was painful not to know what he was thinking. So painful. When I was close, I heard him. Yet being distant, I heard him more. I finally found my place in life. A place where I am close as possible, yet eternally distant. She next. There we go. This one's its kind of spooky how fourth wall breaking it is. Why humans love? Why do humans band together? You. Why are you alive? I just like that because obviously it's fourth wall breaking, but at the same time it almost hits you. It's like, yeah, why? Just kind of helps get you that weird thought. Get, you, get your brain thinking a little differently. Beast Curse. Okay, so this is, I think, the only other one that I haven't gotten up to level 4 yet. Let's see. Once upon a time, there were three princesses. The youngest princess was, wild, was widely regarded as the ugliest woman in all of the land. Actually, I already did read this one. She kept donating her life to... I think I did. So, I mean, if, if I didn't... Again, there you go. Sorry. But I think I did. Dragoon Lance... Okay. Um, let's see. I decided to aid him, and he did the same for me. Thus was our friendship born. It wasn't perfect, of course. Mistakes were made along the way. Still, we remained friends. The blue wind that caresses these grasslands had a pleasing scent. I bring my cheek to his, and he twitches, almost as if tickled. Then I spread my wings and let him ride me unto the skies above. Pretty sure that's a... Drakengard? Nod? It just... Sounds like it, at least. Spear of the Year. Um, which prince would succeed the throne? When news came down that the king had died in battle, the two men each declared themselves the next true king, rallying the people to take the side of one or the other. In the midst of this coronation battle, a third man appeared, claiming to be a prince. Bright, capable, and brave, he dispatched the two foolish brothers and went on to become a wise and just king above all. Decades later, the king announced on his deathbed that he wasn't royalty at all, but in fact was the son of a commoner. Upon hearing this revelation, the people stormed the castle and hung their beloved ruler from the rafters. It's just so fucked. God. 